That's just spot on, um, one o'clock, and I welcome you to today's meeting of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. Um, can I ask, as usual, that all phones switch to silent or off, and remind members and presenters who are using microphones when presenting, if you can get as close as you can to the microphone so that people in the public gallery can hear what we're deliberating. Um, just before we start the meeting, um, can I ask, everybody to join me in a minute's silence and respect of all those people who lost their lives in the recent terrorist attack, attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand. And also, um, on Mondays, I'm sure everybody is fully aware, um, that will mark 30 years since the Hillsborough disaster. So if I could ask everybody to stand in silence for one minute, please. to the agenda and to item one and are there any apologies for absence that have been received through you? Yes, I've received apologies from Councillor Mayor, I've received comments, Councillor Brocourt, Councillor Nicholas, Councillor Powell, Gideon Van Toven, Lynn Collins and Councillor Wood. Any further apologies? No, item two is declarations of interest. Three is the minutes of the previous meeting of the combined authority held on the 8th of March 2019, um, then included in pages 1 to 8. Can I ask for those to be agreed, please? Um, item 4, um, as I just briefly mentioned there, and we've had a minute silence um, to respect the 30 years since the Hillsborough disaster, um, just to perhaps put on record from the combined authority that, um, and we have to be careful, of course, because I've I've taken advice on this, and uh, my learned friend um, uh, has explained that whilst there are trials still pending, and a retrial potentially, that we have to all be very cognizant of subject to say. But what we can say, I think, um, from all the leaders and the Mayor Anson and myself, is that we are fully behind the families, the survivors and the campaigners in their continued fight for justice for the 96. On uh, what's happening outside, um, I'm not sure people will have either seen or heard, heard um, for the, uh, people who've got issues around climate change and the environment. And of course, I think we're all very much aware that climate change is one of the biggest threats facing our society, which requires serious and bold action from us all. Whilst there is more room for us to do, our city region has an excellent track record of delivering on green concerns, and I want to see some of, that, uh, some of those out. Our low carbon economy, for instance, is one of the biggest success stories. We're two billion pounds a year to the city region, which employs 22,000 people. And this morning, I've published an open letter setting out the comprehensive action that we're taking as a combined authority, from setting an ambition to be zero carbon, by 2040, and if you remember, we were first in the country when we did this, others have subsequently adopted our threshold. Um, we've launched a £10 million green investment fund, and we're investigating how to harness the power of the River Mersey to create plentiful, predictable, renewable energy. We're also working to tackle air quality issues by developing an integrated public transport system investing £460 million pounds of brand new publicly owned trains which you will see hopefully uh, come on stream at the end of this year and certainly early next year. We've 
put a down payment on a 600 kilometer city region walking and cycle net network and we're trailing zero emissions hydrogen buses which people will see 25 new ones um, which will be on in the fleet which we announced just a few weeks ago and of course we can't do everything on our own we need concerted action from central government and central government um, we myself and Mayor Anson went to um, a green environment and air quality summit in London and very forcefully put the needs of both the city of Liverpool and the city region on the agenda and we would like to see investment uh, and greater investment in low carbon energy generation more investments in our public transport so that we can get people and give them a real alternative to get out of the car in the north and scrappage schemes which we asked for on that day for older more polluting cars and I'm sure I speak for all members when I say to those here today and across the city region who aren't here but we'll continue to push for that action whilst at the same time we will keep doing our utmost to ensure that our city region is as green as it can possibly be. Last week I was delighted to announce the uh, combined authority was successful in its bid for £7.5 million pounds to improve five train stations across the city region through what's called the National Access for All scheme and match funded by £7.5 million pounds of our own SIF funding and bids to fit lifts at Bacon Head Park, Broadgreen, Hillside, Hunts Cross and St Michael's stations were all successful and funding for the construction of the new lift for the Northern Line platform at Liverpool Central Station has also been confirmed and all this marks another really important step for our work to make our rail network the most accessible in the whole country. Our public transport network is a lifeline for so many people, especially in working class areas, yet so often with those with disabilities, for instance, are excluded from accessing it due to our outdated infrastructure. So, of course, modifying our stations to improve accessibility will have a huge impact on the lives of passengers who are wheelchair users um, or who have reduced mobility or, for instance, are travelling with prams or buggies or even fools who are 57 years of age who think they can play football and then do the back in and have to step off the step off the train onto the platform. This um, funding shows that we're building on our uh, record of fighting for a truly integrated and wholly accessible na network which obviously includes those trains and I'm really proud of the work that we've already done um, including the match funding from the combined authority which we will obviously seek approval of at this meeting um, but we will get a city region um, that will both um, provide ease and dignity for, for people um, to access our transport network. Uh, last month I attended Nippon with Mayor Anderson, Councillor Sean Donnelly who is the Deputy Leader of Mosley and Councillor Sue Murphy who is the Deputy in St Helens and I think we together showcased what the city region actually provides for investment to an international audience. And whilst I was there, I was proud to announce a commission chaired by Denise Barrett Baxendale to develop proposals for a new station. And that doesn't do it justice, um, a new station, because it sounds just like a train station. This isn't. This is going to be an international gateway for the whole of the city region, which connects HS2 and NPR, Northern Powerhouse Rail. And my ambition is for this station to become a destination in itself, a scheme of architectural significance with retail, office and much, much more. We also announced um, support for the LCR Pride Foundation's bid for the city region to hold the Gay Games in 2026. And our region is well accustomed to holding sports and events of all sizes and um, spectaculars that attract a worldwide audience and if we're successful we'll provide the opportunity for us to build on our very strong track record of supporting LGBT plus rights uh, empowering communities and creating lasting social change in our city region and just yesterday I joined the Police and Crime Commissioner to launch the Merseyside the Domestic Abuse Workshop Workplace Scheme, sorry Jane which gives employers 
the tools, resources and training to respond when an employee, a member of their staff, is at risk of domestic abuse and it includes helping employers to provide a safe space where staff affected by domestic abuse can talk confidentially via a network of trained volunteer champions who will ensure that vulnerable colleagues are signposted to the support that they most need. And they also strengthened our commitment to tackling violence against women and girls <coughs> by uh, appointing Councillor Emily Spruill as my new mayoral advisor to take this vital agenda forward. Uh, before we move on to five, I think Jamie, you just wanted to come in. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor Rotherham. And it's just to emphasise the point that you uh, made there about the Domestic Abuse Workplace Champion Scheme. It is for all employers, including all employers in this room, to acknowledge that one in four women and one in six men will experience domestic abuse of some kind in their lifetime. Consequently, there are victims of domestic abuse and probably perpetrators too in all of our organisations. And this scheme is free, it's free training, uh, it is a free toolkit and it will help employers to uh, help their staff, reducing thereby sickness absenteeism and uh, the, the trauma that, that uh, your employers, employees might be feeling and also improve um, productivity. So you can get in touch with me. Oh, in fact, what I'm asking is for uh, the commitment from employers within the room, so the combined authority, Mersey Travel and local authorities, that includes police and fire and, and, um, and others. I will be approaching you uh, with a request to sign up and uh, disseminate this scheme throughout your, your organisations. Thanks. Thanks, Jane. Um, I think that's it. Call to action for us all. Five is the um, adult education budget allocations for this year, and the report provides confirmation of the AEB allocation for the city region and also sets out funding allocations for the academic year 2019 20. Um, just for people to, to know, that Appendix 2 to this report is exempt, but before Sue takes us through the report, can I bring to members' attention some additional wording in relation to Recommendation E? And recommendation E is a company reads, asks the combined authority to approve the award of contracts by the combined authority to providers as summarised in Appendix 2. It is proposed that further wording is added to this recommendation and after the word Appendix 2, the following is inserted. Subject to due diligence should due diligence render any bid unsustainable, funding will be offered to the next ranked highest bidder. So, um, is that accepted? Agreed, thank you. Um, Sue, Sue, therefore, yeah, that's Sue. Um, Sue Jarvis is going to take us through this report. Thank you, Chair. From the 1st of August this year, the Combined Authority will now be responsible for the commissioning, the delivery and the management of the adult education budget in Liverpool City Region. This has been confirmed now as £51.3 million for the academic year 2019-20. Um, as as the, the Mayor's noted, the report presents for approval the funding allocations for 2019-20 and this covers the approach taken to allocate grants to the FE colleges based in the city region and to the local authorities who deliver community learning. <coughs> it also covers the competitive tender process for all other providers who are wishing to deliver provision from the 1st of August. Devolution itself provides the opportunity to better tailor the skills system to address the local area need and economic priorities. And what it also does is allow the, the combined authority to deliver new flexibilities and innovations using the adult education budget funding. So for example, we will be looking to lift some of the restrictions that are currently a feature of national policy and a key local change will be to increase the threshold salary of the national low wage learner pilot up to the real living wage level. This presents a great opportunity for residents to support those in low wage and low skilled jobs 
to gain new skills and then progress on to higher level skills. The combined authority will also fund additional outcome payments for sector-based work academies. The aim of this is to stimulate a better market response from providers to employer need and to target this to the key employment sectors in the city region. We will also be introducing 30 test and learn pilots that will involve more flexible methods of service delivery and more tailored learning to um, cover a number of areas including digital skills, English and maths and English for speakers of other languages. We will also wrap around this test and learn approach a programme of evaluation so that we can share good practice and we can use the findings to inform future service delivery. A key factor for the combined authority is to ensure it maintains a financially stable and a high quality provider base. This is an important consideration. So with this in mind, the combined authority has committed funding to protect against any unintended consequences of devolution during 2019-20, particularly anything that may destabilise provision for Liverpool City Region residents. We have also earmarked funding to respond to in-year growth to make sure that our learning remains fit for purpose and meets the needs of learners. And finally, just to um, flag up that from August, the Combined Authority will be adopting a more proactive approach to managing providers on our patch than is currently the case with the, the national um, arrangements. And this will be important, particularly as we're looking to change behaviour and practice as the devolution rolls out. So uh, can I refer members to the report's recommendations as, as previously noted? Okay, are there any questions? Joe? Can I, can I just make a, a, a recommendation that we, um, there's an amendment that's been tabled, your points that you've made uh, around the contacts of um, being summarised to, to due diligence and, and, and looking at the due diligence. Can we agree that from A to J in that appendix is also supported as well in the amendments so that the, the amendments goes into uh, consolidated report? Can we agree that amendment then before we move forward? Yeah, thanks for that, Joe. Um, Councillor Robertson Collins. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you for the report there. Um, so, as the report says, the adult education budget allocation for the current year is just over 51 million. But is the city region getting the level of adult education budget funding that we need? The, the, the allocation of 51.3 million is slightly below what we expected at 52 million. Um, and with this in mind, um, the combined authorities already written to the Secretary of State to, to note that should any additional AUB funding become available, we would welcome the opportunity to, to use that in the city region. What The way that the funding is calculated is not based on a national formula and it was dependent on the number of Liverpool city region residents who um, were receiving learning in 1718. So that's the reason we got the 51.3 million. What we're doing to look to the future is we're working with the other combined authorities and with the Department for Education to submit a, a collaborative bid to the next spending review to make the case that additional funds should be allocated to the national pot for allocation for the adult education budget and then that would come down into the city region as well. So we're covering a number of angles to try and increase the levels of funding for future years. We've basically got 3.99% of a national pot and what, however big that national pot was, we'd still get the same percentage. The pot has been smaller than we necessarily would have liked and that meant that we got slightly less than we should have got but we are uh, trying to work with the department to see whether we can get some additional uh, resource and funding. Um, Joe? Yeah, just, just again, just in relation to the due diligence that we're doing with the providers now, what are we doing in terms of performance management of them moving forward? Are we, are we checking and doing that? We've, we've got a whole programme of performance management that we'll be looking to introduce. Um, we're not changing um, the, the main requirements that nationally have been put on providers because we don't want to destabilise their systems, but we're introducing additional 
um, requests or things around um, having more of a, an area and a locality um, assessment of what providers are doing. So we'll work with our local authorities and the colleges, but also providers in an area to make sure they're delivering what is required. Um, we're also introducing um, monthly performance management of providers will have performance dashboards and we're playing back to the combined authority and within that analysis we'll be looking at diversity measures and a whole range of other um, indicators to make sure that the providers are delivering what we, we want. We are also, we'll also maintain an ongoing approach to financial health and due diligence, so we'll keep an eye on that. Similarly, quality on Ofsted, we're working with Ofsted. And we're also working nationally with the <coughs> Education and Skills Funding Agency around audit arrangements to make sure that we carry out audit arrangements on providers um, and do that in collaboration with the SFA. So quite a lot that's been introduced and we can bring back reports as required. And Mayor Anderson's question, of course, is about performance management, which is, will we get delivery? And that's the whole idea of the approach that we're taking to ensure that we can better align things and get the delivery that we need, certainly in the uh, occupational areas where we've identified we have a priority. Just to add on that, we can claw back money in here um, and then recycle that back into the wider provider base if you find your provider not doing what they said they were going to do. Councillor Robertson Collins. Thank you, Chair. If just one more from me. I mean, obviously, we all welcome devolution because we want things to be more responsive to what we want here, specifically in this region. So, how will the combined authority better understand what learning works and ensure that the skills system works better for residents and employers? Probably three areas to, to draw out there. Um, I've mentioned the test and learn pilots, and they will be a really important part of the delivery in the next year as we try and understand how they work and we share learning amongst the so colleges and the councils who are primarily delivering the test and learn pilots. What we're also looking to do is undertake some thematic reviews during the year, again to try and get our understanding of what's being delivered and get a bit more information about that. And so for example, we might want to look more at learners who've been out of the care system and what provision is really being delivered for those learners and can we um, tweak the system to make sure it's, it's been fit for purpose in that respect. We're also looking at areas where we know that there's been issues with um, <coughs> dealing with issues coming to the colleges such as mental health of young people. So we're looking what sort of training can we provide for on, on a collective basis, such as mental health first aid for um, people delivering training in colleges or providers who've got a consistent approach to that in the city region and again using that information to feed into our wider learning. And we'll also keep working closely with our colleagues to make sure we're meeting the needs of employers as part of all of the, the delivery to make sure that we're not just meeting learning needs but we're meeting employer needs as part of our approach. <coughs> Okay, can we therefore agree the recommendations as amended and set out on page nine? And just before we go on to the, the next report, I think it would be remiss, wouldn't it, uh, not to make members aware that this will be Sue's last meeting. And um, she's not gone very far. She's uh, started a new role at the University of Liverpool. And I think on behalf of, of everybody, we'd first of all like to congratulate Sue on her role. And importantly, thank her for the hard work that she has put into the city region and the activities of our area over the last 12 years, including, it has to be said, the city employment strategy, uh, the multi-area agreement, which I know was uh, quite a piece of work, and of course the city region deal. Sue was heavily involved in the review of strategic governance in 2013, and of course the establishment of the combined authority in 2015. And she also served as the statutory scrutiny officer during 17 and 18 so um, her contribution has not only just been valued but been really immense to what we're trying to achieve here as a new authority and we will miss her drive and professionalism and um, I know she's not going far but I think um, we would all like to show our appreciation to what you've done for us so thanks very much.
Item six is the uh, City of Leeds and Skills Capital Prospectus, and the report uh, updates the Skills Capital uh, Prospectus for approval. The prospectus itself looks to support capital investments post 16 skills provision and proposes five investment strands on how this investment can be achieved. And are there any questions? And so we'll be happy to answer at a lesson meeting uh, if anyone's got any specific questions on skills capital prospectus. Now, um, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 29? Agreed. Thanks. Um, seven is the combined authority has recently been presented with new delivery and funding opportunities, which were not known at the time of the budget setting process. So this report proposes an approach to provide the appropriate resource to enable the new delivery and funding opportunities to be achieved and Frank is going to take us through this report. Thanks Joe. Uh, as mentioned there, this is about linking recent opportunities for the city region with the appropriate resource required to enable that we can ensure on delivery of those opportunities. Um, we have got new funding opportunities and um, <coughs> these were not readily visible at the time of budget setting back in 2018. And in order for us to effectively capture those opportunities, we've got to make sure we've got the right resources in place for that. Some of the opportunities include a housing partnership with Homes England. Um, as was touched on earlier, the recently announced HS2 stroke NPR commission for, for the new station in the city region, the access for all funding that was referenced there, um, potential funding from a local industrial strategy that's currently um, in development. Um, stronger places funding and other funding strands that will be available to the combined authority. Um, the, the City Reads and Performance in delivering the previously approved um, local growth fund projects has required renewed commitment and we've had a recent upturn in performance but the leaders, the mayors and the left chair have been clear that the City Region needs to address its capacity <coughs> constraints and it needs to do that meaningfully in order to exploit current opportunities, develop future opportunities and prevent any lost <coughs> opportunities for our, our residents. And in order to deliver on our existing opportunities and be ready for those future opportunities, we need to strengthen capacity in respect to policy, commissioning and project development, project management and investment. The, the additional funding that the City Region has received and is likely to continue to receive is predominantly in the form of capital. This allows the city region to commit to new commissions and investments, but it does provide limited help in respect of assembling the teams and enabling the development of the projects that enables that capital to be invested. Internal teams require revenue funding, and that revenue funding is scarce across the city region at both the CA and within the six local authority areas. And the only source for that near-term funding for us is SIF pre-development funded. So what the report proposes is to allocate 2.5 million of the 6.4 million SIF pre-development funding that was approved back in October 2018 against the increased delivery resource and look for a further 2 million to be approved for 2020-21 and to allocate up to 100% of the 2.5 million that's available annually under the single transport budget to development of safe transport interventions. It it's proposes to include from the pre-development fund an additional capacity in the local authorities for them to develop economic development projects and to act as the local counterparts for SIF funding. As such, all costs contained within the report are funded within the overall envelope of the strategic, the strategic investment fund don't have any implications for the mayoral precept, nor did they increase the net budget provision of the combined authority for 2019 and 20. The proposal is to increase both CA and local authority capacity, and failure to deliver on the programme of works of outcomes that are associated with the devolution deal is one of the largest corporate risks facing the CA. In conclusion, the CA needs resource to, to capitalise on recent opportunities, the city region needs resource to capitalise on those future opportunities and we must recognise that our resource requirement isn't static, 
it, it will continue to grow and change with new responsibilities and funding and recognising that will help us to keep pace with our potential rather than chase behind our potential. So the paper provides a recommendation to release that pre-development funding. It's to increase our delivery capacity both at the CA and in our local authorities and the request is that details of the actual um, elements of those schemes be delegated to the Chief Executive of the CA to operationalise the approvals. I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions, Joe? It's not a, a, a question really, it's a point, um, and it's, well, it's an observation and a point. But it's absolutely crucial that we do this, and we've got to not make sure that we just talk about uh, um, schemes that we're underway with at, at relevant junctures during the year. But I think it's important that the public in the city region understand what we're dealing with. The fact is, as we have, and government has, central government decommissioned the likes of the North West Development Agency, other agencies, it's down and it's incumbent on the city region to pick up the cudgel and deliver on that. And we can't do that without capacity. We can't do that uh, developing strategy and not making sure we deliver on those things. So it's absolutely vital that we do it. And as you said, Frank, but I'd like to see it more strongly emphasised in the most things that we do, that the reality is, is that in order for us to deliver and then to put forward proposals for more, we can only do that with quality people and staff and resource in place. And that investment then gives a revenue return for all our local authorities to actually support the things that we need moving forward. <coughs> and without the teams, without that capacity in place, we can't do it. So it's simply the start of how we should do it. We need to tell people, we're talking about a billion pound of gain share alone, plus then three, four, five, up to five billion and what we can bid into in strategic investment money. Now, I'm not saying that that's the panacea for all our ills, but the reality is it's there. We've got to bid into it. And we've got to make sure that we've got the capacity to deliver. So it's a good start, but it's important that we actually remind people and tell people why the combined authority, why we've got a middle system, and why it's doing what it's doing. Thanks for that, Joe. And, and obviously, whilst we're reminding people, we should also remind them that our six local authorities have been hollowed out, they've been hit the hardest in the whole country. Um, and that's not me saying that we've got statistical evidence that backs up that contention. The other thing is that um, what this capacity provides to us is the ability in a potential post-Brexit world, and we don't know when that might be, um, and if it, hopefully, um, it doesn't happen, but if it, if it does happen, We'll be bidding in for shared prosperity funding, and the, despite the mechanism and formula um, yet to be agreed by government, we need to be in the best position to have projects so that we can get a chunk of that money being um, the area that's been detrimentally impacted by this current government. Perhaps we might be able to get a, a larger share of the pot in the future. Um, Derek, did you want to come Thank you, Steve. I, I endorse entirely what you've just taken very much. What I was going to say, actually, and the key concept here is that all local authorities have been hollowed out, as you say, more than 50% of our uh, our core budgets have been taken away, 71% in terms of St Helens over the last 10 years. And so just the delivery of existing projects is hard work. But when we're dealing with huge systemic problems, which we've inherited, such as the decline of high streets, and the need for better capital infrastructure for our transport, etc. We need sophisticated uh, officers who are in a, 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 have a level of expertise which does not sit around in, in, a, in a local authority just waiting for the opportunity to do a project. So therefore, you have to bring these people in in order to, to lay, the, lay the ground, as Joe said, to lay the ground, lay the foundation, so we can make quality bids, both the city reach but also crucially nationally to all these other pots, which are suddenly going to appear in the post-Brexit world. So this is a vital uh, initiative, and I wholeheartedly uh, endorse it. Okay, um, I, I just would add one further thing, and that is that the whole idea when certain uh, individuals sitting around the table and, and others who aren't here entered into a combined authority and a devolution agreement, 
is because we needed some medium and long term strategic direction to pull together the assets that we have and the ability of and the talent of 1.6 million people in the city region and that doesn't happen overnight so I understand sometimes people's frustration at pointing towards what it is that we are trying to achieve on, on their behalf because they want to see shiny things come into the ground but sometimes just like what happened in Manchester with uh, many decades of strategically planning for a tram and other things that's where we're at we are planning for big transformational projects that will have a positive impact on how this city region in the future goes forward. Um, with that said, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 71 of the report, please? Okay, item eight is the LEP review and it presents a proposal to align the combined authority with the Liverpool City Region Local Enterprise Partnership and that's as a consequence of the 2018 Ministerial Review of LEPs across the country and the paper makes reference to the use of LGF which um, now people here will be aware of but this is for a wider audience but that was awarded to the local enterprise partnerships but it was agreed that it would be administered, administered by and invested by the combined authority through our SIP program that we've just been speaking about so regardless of these local arrangements the LEP remains accountable to government for their use and our two organisations and myself and Asif Hamid uh, personally work closely together to make sure that this responsibility is met. Um, the LEP board maintains the strategic oversight over funds awarded and uh, it's able to challenge decisions relating to their use through either the LEP board or through um, what we have here as a combined authority. On occasions the sequencing of meetings and the need to progress investment opportunities in line with the government's expectations means that the LEP board is asked to confirm or ratify an investment proposal after it's been to the combined authority and this is one of those occasions but it doesn't dilute or obfuscate the role of the LEP who will consider this at its next meeting which is on the 16th of May this year at which it will ratify hopefully the proposal or request modifications that may alter the call. So you'll see from the timescales in the paper that this does not present any risk to making the call and having it open for a sufficiently long period, even if challenges are required and the CA and LEP operate in a transparent manner and also together with our community, uh, we wanted the status of this decision to be fully understood before we take it today. Um, basically that's a long way of saying that unfortunately um, through administrative errors we didn't fu fully acknowledge, uh, acknowledge just what an important part the LEP and the LEP funding plays in the funding that comes to the combined authority through things like our, our SIF. Um, so um, I'm happy to take any questions on, on that issue. Um, no? Okay, so can we then agree the recommendations are set out on page 77 of the report? Oh, sorry, no, I, I was asking for questions, but if, if there aren't any questions, I mean, Mark, you, you don't need to add anything unless there's something, something I've missed out, but please feel free. Nothing to add, but happy to take questions. Um, okay, so can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 77 of the report? In particular, recommend, recommendation D, which seeks appointments from the combined authority to the LEP company. And in the interim, that I propose that Councillor Davis and myself be appointed as guarantors to the Liverpool City Region Growth Company, which is the holding company, um, with these nominations being revisited at the annual meeting in May. So this is a, a holding position, really, until we have... Um, our meetings after the local elections. Um, is that agreed? Item 9 then is the adoption of the working definition of Islamophobia and this report seeks uh, approval from the combined authority for the working definition of Islamophobia phobia as pr uh, promoted by the all-party parliamentary group and Kirsty is going to take us in very briefly through this report. 
Yes, so as you said, the uh, report sets out some more background on this, but in essence, this is about adopting um, the All Party Parliamentary Group on British Muslims' um, definition of Islamophobia. <coughs> That's set out in the recommendations um, on the report, and the definition itself is there at 2.1. Um, there is further background um, on the uh, definition in the report, uh, which you can have a read of, but in essence, this is about the combined authority adopting that definition. Any qu questions for Kirsty? Okay, um, so members will recall that at the meeting of the Combined Authority on the 19th of October, we did uh, adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition of anti-Semitism. So this is to enable both of these definitions to be incorporated into the day-to-day -day working of the Combined Authority. And I'm proposing that uh, the Fairness and Social Justice Advisory Board, FASJAB, um, be asked to undertake this work and report back to us at a future meeting. Um, in addition to my earlier, earlier proposal, can we therefore agree the recommendation as set out on page 153 of the report, please? Okay, item 10 is the uh, draft committee timetable for 2019-20, and it's presented really just for our approval, uh, unless there are any questions, of course. Uh, no questions. Can we therefore agree the committee timetable is set out on page 159. Item 11 is the appointment of the independent member and nomination of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority and it's our final report uh, which seeks the approval of Martin McDonough to serve as an independent member on the Audit and Governance Committee and to note the appointment of Paul Corcoran as the nominated substitute for the chair of the LEP board um, any questions? Um, more than uh, happy, in fact, delighted to move the, the recommendation, Chair. Um, Paul Corcoran, uh, we're noting the appointment of Paul, but in terms of uh, Mar Martin McDonough, a gentleman who I've known for longer years than I, I care to remember, but way before, uh, way before uh, back in the 80s, um, a fine human being and a fine family, a credit to the uh, uh, to our organisation, but frankly, the sort of individual who builds the strength of the communities which we seek to uh, represent. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to move uh, move this uh, on behalf of the city region. Great, and, and the sort of, of, of quality people that we need to engage in, in this whole process. So, um, can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 161 of the report, please? Okay, uh, it's public question time, so uh, I think that we have two quick questions from Josie Mullen. Um, can I invite you, Josie, to go to the microphone to speak, please? Thank you. Uh, question one. Why has Liverpool Combined Authority decided that the question of threatened green space, green belt and green wedge cannot form part of the year of the environment? And question two, if the Year of the Environment is so important, could the Liverpool Combined Authority organise a meeting for all green campaign groups in the LCA, together with the Metro Mayor, leaders, City Mayor, to discuss the very serious issues relating to green space loss? Thanks, Josie. Um, Josie, I I'll... Normally what we do is we take them individually and we respond within 10 working days. But I'll just give you a verbal update if that's okay. Uh, just because uh, I think people have, have come out today specifically uh, on these issues. And um, The first one is that, of course, it's not a decision of the combined authority in regards to the year of the environment, which is a, a broad coalition of...